Hey there everyone, this is Life Welcome back to my playthrough of Etrian Odyssey 2. Today we are going to continue exploration of the third floor, uh, start covering the chop points, as well as anything else. I've also defeated my first best affiliate off screen, got his huge petal and sold it off, uh, for w and it gives you wildflower and poison gas. Um, I've also gotten the red horn off screen, which gives an axe, but I need gel cubes, five gel cubes in order to get it. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, because I'm tired, just because I'm tired, uh, today is going to be a little different. Um, I'm essentially going to shut up about now, and I'm going to come in with post-commentary. Uh, before I do leave, though, there was, uh, something I did want to discuss is, uh, kind of a fib, and I want to unturn it before it becomes too big. Uh, it's, uh, I have not beaten the post-game of this game yet. There, that, that's it. Uh, I have not beaten your child. I have not beaten Dragon. I have not beaten Drake. I have not beaten Worm. I have not beaten uh, any of the post-game bosses. I have uh, only recently reached the sixth stratum, and I have beaten Overlord. But that's pretty much the end of the main game. So I have beaten the main game, but I have not beaten the post-game. So you will know, do know that I will be asking for help much later on in the game for the post-game material. Uh, and most of you, I'm sure, will be helpful and compliant, and that's what I hope for, most of you. You guys have really been a, bit, a, a good group of commenters, and have really helped me a lot, and I've helped you a lot. And I do feel like this is a fair trade. But before I say anything else, uh, just en enjoy the episode. Uh, Post-commentary me is going to sound less sleepy and tired than how I feel right now. But I want to record this now, and record the audio later. Uh, specifically because Sundays are really hard days to record video for, uh, so it's best that I just post-commentate it. Anyways, later guys. Oh man, post-commentary me is... No, yeah, this is this is post-commentary me. Uh, yeah, uh, live commentary me that lasted for two minutes just before this, yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing the third floor today. Right now, we are traversing the western side f before we could meet Fly School. You could do this before you meet Fly School. And... Are you nervous? It's... it's yeah. Post-commentary is a little bit harder for me, because I... It's... It, I have to watch what I'm doing, and I have to sync it up, and it requires a slightly more work, but it's a lot... I have a lot more freedom to do with it, so I think it's okay. Uh, anyways, you're gonna notice in a little bit that I am not using my Chavador, that I am using a gunner in her place. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna keep Dan, uh, not Dan, his name's Jason, Jason permanently. Uh, for right now, I'm just kinda using Jason as filler, but what I'm thinking is that we might keep Jason because the first time I beat the main game, this is an exact replica of the team I was using then. Uh, triple ladybug set, whatever. <laughs> I'm post commentator and I don't care anymore. Uh, so, I, I introduced Jason, and so it, it's the exact same team I used to beat the main game the first time, in the exact same order, in the exact same placement. Uh, and it's M, D, H, L, and back row is H, and, uh, H and D, yeah. And once uh, L reaches level 70, I have not lied about this part. Uh, once L reaches level 70, I retired her into a level 30 Ronin and distributed the skill points to the more powerful, uh, that one overhead skill, like Mahambi or something like that. Anyways, allocating skill points. Uh, Eric's getting started on Racket because we're no longer having a Trabador around, so. Yay. Uh, Gunner's working on Hotshot, he already has the three elemental shots to help us clear elemental weaknesses, as well as to, uh, take advantage of the fact that most enemies have elemental weaknesses, so, and get conditional drops a little bit easier. He's also gonna eventually get headshot, leg shot, and so on and so forth for binding purposes, in order to get enemies bind, uh, you know, the ones that require binds. And here's Plasgal, and... Now that we've speaking to the minister, he will let us pass. Have other, he has other things to do, and 
It, he just he just he just walks off. You, you won't see him for a little while. He's not gonna appear on the fourth floor or anything. So he leaves, and we're allowed to enter the floor now. The guards, like I think the Synodus or whatever it's called, gave us a map, and it is so my OCD self just kind of uh, mapped things in. Yeah. Uh, drawing in the edges of this game is still a lot harder than I. Even though you can in this game, uh, I rewatched McGammer a little bit, and he noted how in EO1 you can't map on the sides. And even in this game, it's kind of hard to map on the sides. In EO3, I don't think I really mapped on the sides very much. I um, love how I'm getting on these tangents. Here, I have a ladybug cactoid set. It's actually already been up for a whole turn, but it got blinds out in the air. It got hit pretty hard. Uh, now that Evil Eye is level 5, it will hit 87% of the time base chance and a little extra. So I think it, right now it's actually 89% base chance. It thanks to the luck beads I have equipped. Uh, I believe it's like 1% for every 10 luck or something like that. I forget. Pretty sure though. Uh, so yeah, that's the base chance of. <laughs> that's the base chance we have right now. Um, if anyone knows the actual the, the actual influence luck has on the status ailments, that would be great information to know. Uh, okay, so, as I said before, I really do like using the FOE control skills over the bells any day, because most of the time they have longer range, and only cost, uh, maybe, like, 7 TP when they're maxed. So I use Racket here, it's little, this is really just to demonstrate Racket, and a Lure Bell on that location would have done just the same, except it wouldn't have cost 15 TP. Uh, so, there you have that. And I also wanted to demonstrate Hot Shot, so I'm gonna do that now. Go to skills, go to Jason, go hit Hotshot, and there's a very specific reason I named this guy Jason. Uh, Jason is an older brother of mine, and that uh, that specific character sprite reminds me a lot of him, so I named him Jason. Uh, previously, in my previous game, uh, you'll know uh, all the names I've been using so far, Linda, Eric, those are the exact same names I used in the game, the main game before, so yeah, except for this gunner, because I already had a gunner made to get to that... Uh, to get to the treasure chest in a few episodes ago. Uh, I just decided to just change his name from Dan to Jason, just, and run with him. I have emotional ties with some, uh, because I have an emotional tie with Jason, then it kind of helps. It helps reinforce the character. So I show off, and now we activate this shortcut. It's an easy way out. So I get into one more fight before I warp wire out of here. And... It's going to be a t double eighty bug roller set. I'm actually not sure if we've already seen this set. During this fight, you're going to see me kind of fiddle with the map on the right side in D4. Where the there's no... Oh, it's the far corner of C4. There's a little bit of wall that I'm, that I'm missing. I'm actually not sure if I get it, so let's check that out. It's totally not paying any attention to the fight. Uh, tornado has gotten a lot better. At level 3 Tornado has been a lot better than level 1 Tornado. And level 10 Tornado is going to be a lot better than level 3 Tornado, of course. Uh, this is Evil Eye at its, uh, at its finest. Uh, Evil Eye by itself is not really that great, but when, once we get Suicide and a few other terrifying related skills, well, mostly just Suicide, and much later on we'll get Betray, betray as well. Uh, I do really like Terrify plus Suicide combo. Um, the main reason I don't use Torpor is because I've had much better luck using Evil Eye Suicide against FOEs and bosses, and not just the regular mobs. So, it's kind of a useful in both places rather than just one. Torpor isn't really useful, super useful against bosses, because all it does is give you setup time, and then you get one very good attack out, and after that, you do normal damage again. Suicide will allow me to do damage to him, and because it's an FOE and they're strong, they're going to do strong damage to themselves. And it will hit them like, they'll hit themselves hard over and over and over. And it, that can last anywhere between two to four turns of suiciding. The first turn, when it's a, the status is inflicted, I have to rely on the Terrify itself, because I can't use Evil Eye and suicide, suicide in the same turn, are you crazy? And besides, even if I had two Hexers, you can't, if one uses Suicide, the Suicide will always go first. So, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, rest up. I wasn't paying attention, I was just kind of rambling on. Uh, 
Just, what are we doing? What are we doing past me? We're going to the palace to report our progress. Okay, of course. So we come in here and we find the we do the find the missing guards. And he says, oh, we've returned, and we've heard all the details from the man we've rescu rescued, an extensive debriefing on what happened in the labyrinth, marvelous work. Please accept this as a token of the Duke's esteem, you get 500 in, and he tells you many other things. They think he even tells you the threat that's happening on the higher floor. And the mission available, you don't have to get it right now, you can actually wait a little while and get it later if you feel like it. There's no disadvantages of taking it later. Um, well, maybe. There's, like, only one slight disadvantage, and all that really is is more traveling. And I'm pretty sure many people are uh, accompanied with traveling. Um, since I'm kind of running out of things to talk about, let's revisit the past. Past me, back at the beginning of this episode, said that we would, uh, discuss chop point items this episode. And the truth is, that's only halfway true. Uh, I didn't actually do any chopping in this episode. And I should know, this video's already been recorded. And... Okay, so we're going to the bar and accepting a few quests. Good, good deal, good deal. If you can't hack, you have no chance of reaching the floating castle, so we have to go beat Gashtor. Uh, we'll do that soon, That where that's like the one of the last things I do in the episode, all the way back in the 18 minute mark, if you want to see that. Uh, let's see. And I accept the Redhorn quest. I'm probably going to get the Redhorns off screen, but as I've mentioned in 8.1, there's this little circle where they are actually kind of very common. And that's where I recommend getting those red horns from if you can. I'm probably going to farm them with my survivalist team so that they can get more EXP. Uh, I've been halfway training the survivalist team anyway. The gatherers I think are level 9 right now with 2 chop, 4 mine, all of them have max take. Uh, they're working on it, needless to say. And eventually they'll get sagacity and ambush as well. Why didn't I cut this out? Oh well. I really didn't edit this video as heavily because I knew I was going to be revisiting it later. But, really all I did was, uh, make sure everything was right, make sure the video compression was right, and so on and so forth, make sure the sync was in order. And then I just kind of slapped this and now I'm doing post-commentary over it. Uh, Audacity, good friend. Uh, Ladybug, okay, whenever you see a solo Ladybug set later on this floor, that means it will always summon Raspilly at the moment it can, so you have to attack it as fast as possible. Unfortunately for me, Ladybugs are really evasive, so... Gandra's attack misses, and we have to fight our Asphilia. Fun! <laughs> Greatest thing ever, having to fight Rasphilias. Uh, Rasphilias are everyone's worst nightmare. Uh, on the third floor, as I said before, they are actually a really devastating piece of work who will one-shot most of your teammates, uh, except maybe a protector. You start, it starts off with a poison attack. The poison does 50 damage, I think. Or 25, maybe? No, 35. Oh, dear. But we get, I've gotten it so close to dead that I'm not as afraid of it anymore. So I just start spamming the skills to make sure it dies before it kills someone. This could have really gotten a lot worse. He could have one-shotted Linda and I'd have to use an emergency nectar. Then I'd have to pay another 500 in, which would require me to go, you know, cycle, continue, so on and so forth. Uh, anyways, this conditional drop of the Brasphilia is the gum vine, which you get from killing it with cut. I could have killed it with cut if I had used... Uh, both Viper and Tornado. Um, but I didn't, so whatever. And it's a 75% chance, and if you have Scavenge, it's almost pretty much a 100% chance, so why? Whatever, man. Northern split of this goes straight to the stairs, we'll be there later. Uh, southern split goes to a bunch of treasure chests, that's why we're here now. Uh, as for the chop item in B B1, well, I want to be like... I guess I'll get on to it later. Uh, haven't we already seen a roller red horn set? Beats me. Uh, here, have a red horn roller set. So much fun. Uh, use Evil Eye on it. Uh, you know, just do it anyways. Red horn charges anyways. Uh, I focus all my attacks on the red horn. No. Now that we have a gunner. I do think the damage output to kill the, will allow us to kill the red horn in one turn and not really worry about whether it gets it out in the first place. But he did get horns, but he does miss it a lot, so... Once again, not too big of a deal. Uh, Terrify... From what I've noticed, Terrify has different effects on different enemies, and the chance of an enemy actually being terrified of an attack is really rank dependent on what they are. 
Alright. It's part two of post commentary. I had to break this up. Uh, so we're going to continue south into the B1 area. And as I was talking about earlier, different enemies seem to have different reactions to terrification. Certain enemies are terrified more often, from at least from what I've noticed. Uh, for the sake of example, and I want to see if anyone else gets the same results, go into the fourth stratum and terrify a Wrathbud. And every time I terrify a Wrathbud, I would... It would be terrified almost every single time without me even having to intervene. I don't know if that's really just a huge lucky sequence of coin tosses, but I'm pretty sure the Wrathbud has a weakness to terrification if that is the case. And if more enemies have weakness to terrification, I'd want to know what they are, right? Or anyone would want to know what they are. So it would seem like certain enemies are weaker to certain status ailments. And terrify it itself, inflicting terrification is probably going to be the same for most enemies in FOEs universally. And so it's going to be 87% effective against most mobs, and it's going to be maybe 21% effective on FOEs, and maybe 5% effective on bosses. So something like that. I'm pretty sure it's actually really just a 21% on most FOEs and bosses. But. Regardless, uh, so what I'm thinking is if we could, but the terrifying status itself, after it's inflicted, seems to have different effects on different enemies, and that's really what I wanted to get about. Also, check this out. Um, if you get into a fight and you escape it, it doesn't count as a turn. It doesn't, a turn does not pass. It, it's hysterical. If you escape from a match, or you kill it off in the first turn, it does not count as a turn. So those FOEs are still stunned. So they're moving, they're moving, they'll still move towards me. They're stunned because it's their third movement turn. Move over, 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 out. That's, <laughs> that's the only time I've ever gotten out of this room alive. So anyways, if anyone wants to conduct uh, testing, science, science, science testing, uh, as I said, the Wrathblood seems to be terrified almost every single time I terrify it. If anyone wants to check on it, see if, if it's just more likely to happen on the Wrathblood, or if I'm just getting really lucky, I think that would be great research to know. I'll probably return to my game after this and continue testing it. I uh, see if different enemies react differently to the terrify, the terrify status itself. Not on its infliction, but the terrify status itself. Um, but really. We all know what a sleeping enemy is going to do, it's going to sleep. And we all know what a poisoned enemy is going to do, it's going to take the same damage no matter what, right? So, seeing Terrify have different results in different enemies would be kind of interesting. Anyways, we're going to touch down on the fourth floor. And by touch down, I mean touch up, I guess, because there's no way to touch down on a, when you're going up the floors. Oh, silly, EO2, going up instead of down. Um... I was, I was thinking about warp wiring, but then I decided, yeah, may as well get access to the 4th floor quest immediately, so I go up to the 4th floor. Fill this in, and we warp wire out of here. Very simple, very easy. Yeah, I definitely want to pull out my game after this and actually test out if different enemies have different reactions to uh, terrification. This Certain enemies don't seem to get as terrified as other enemies, if you've ever noticed. As I said, the Wrathblood seems to get uh, terrified almost all the time on my end. But I want to test against more enemies to see if it's just my dumb luck or if, it, is it, if there is really certain enemies that are weak to terrification. I think that'd be very interesting to know. Uh, rambling on about terrification, aren't we? Uh, let's see. Going back to the first floor, we're doing Gash Force Quest now. Oh, and it's like, what, 19 minutes in? So I was about right when I said at the beginning of the game, predicting 18 minutes in. <laughs> Very nice. So we go through the first floor shortcut. I actually wait for him to turn the other direction. Uh, he gets aggro when you come within a certain space of him, apparently. So gas door is up for fighting. And... Yeah, here, just enjoy the fight.
that's Gastor. A little after heavy blow, you defeat Gastor. Uh, typically skill spamming will get you past him, regardless of how many members you have. You should be able to beat him on the third floor, so... Yeah. Take your time. Do what you need to. And we still have only a few seconds left. I really just turn in the quest and end off the episode, so I'm gonna see you guys next time. Later. Bye. All the good stuff.